The sun is out and so am I. Today we are going to be doing some more wildlife photography and today we're going to be using the Canon 250D and the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens. The Canon 250D is a small camera, meaning the setup is lighter. The Sigma 150 600 millimeter lens is a relatively chunky piece of kit, meaning it does increase the weight. However, as lenses of this length go, it's still quite light, meaning we are doing minimal photography today even though we're using a huge camera setup. Now I spotted a crow on a post and I was gonna try and creep up. This is the photo that I got from a distance where I was gonna try and creep up closer to get a better photo, but now he's flown onto the path in front of me. Now on the floor, the crow doesn't look that great. It just, uh, things on the floor, you want them perched on something, generally speaking. There is a post over here as well. So we might just be able to get him on one. We just need to wait for it to fly on one, and I'm not sure if waiting for a crow is... Oh, okay, so we've got a bird of prey. I believe it's a red kite, but it's very far away. Again, you're not going to be able to see it. This camera's way too wide, but it's just hovering above the trees. As most birds of prey do, it's circling. It's going in a constant circle, but it does seem to be making its way towards me. So we're just going to have to wait and see if it comes closer, and if it does, hopefully we'll get some photos. And true to form, the red kite flew off in the other direction. So we did get this one photo just so you could see what it was like. And the crow didn't go onto any post, but it did fly around a little bit. And I got these photos, which are quite nice. So we did get something, but now we're gonna keep walking and see what else we can find. Now, before we carry on with this video, I just have two things to say. One, watch till the end because some crazy things happen. Two, have you checked the subscriber count down below? We're at 930 at the time of filming, which is absolutely incredible. Now, we're not at 1,000 yet, but I never thought that we'd get close. I never thought that that many people would be like, yeah, you know what? I want to subscribe to this person to see their content, see their photography, and I'm so happy with all the loving comments, the likes, the subscriptions that you've given. The thought that I'm inspiring other photographers is incredible. So now for the challenge. I think that we can reach 1,000 subscribers by the end of October. By the time of releasing, it's probably about the 22nd of October. We have about a week left. Can we get it to 1,000? I think we can. If you tell your friends, your family, your mum, dad, brother, sister, girlfriend, boyfriend, wife, husband, tell everyone. Tell your grandparents if they're up with the YouTube Times. Anyone who has an account, if we can get them to subscribe, they can also see this inspiring content and we can reach 1,000 subscribers. If that's possible, please do drop a like and subscribe yourself if you haven't, and let's carry on with the video. Now, just ahead of me on the canal, there is a swan. It is sitting underneath quite an orange tree, and the reflections of the orange trees on the water, again, I'm not sure if you can see them, is gonna make an awesome photo. Now, I'm keeping my distance because we've got a long lens, and the swan's already quite a big bird. If we get too close, then, we're gonna fill the frame with the bird, but this time we want to capture the kind of, hopefully, bokeh of the colorful leaves reflecting in the water. We're trying to involve the context, which I keep going on about in my videos at the moment. We're trying to get context into the wildlife photos. It really brings them to life. Now, the swan is cleaning, meaning he's spending a lot of time with his head in unideal situations. And I think it's a young swan, meaning it's not the most beautiful, crisp white swan. However, it'll still make a cool photo. So I'm gonna go and take that now. And I've taken some photos of the swan who is just here and you can see the orangey trees surrounding it. Now, I couldn't get the bokeh that I wanted because the lens just doesn't have that low an aperture. This Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens, I believe it's five to 6.4, is it? Five to 6.3. Because of its long focal length, when you zoom in, you do get compression. 
However, you don't get that much bokeh if you're zoomed out or the subject is a long way away from the camera. So if I zoomed right into this swan's face, as you can see, I'm very close to it, I'd get a nice lot of blur. However, generally speaking with this lens, if you're zooming on something far away, you won't get that. And we have just arrived on a golf course. I'm walking onto it now and I haven't been here for a while, but there's normally good wildlife. Now on this golf course, there's lakes, there's trees. There's often some buzzards or some kingfishers, some herons. I've seen them all here. I'm not guaranteeing we'll see them today, but that is the kind of things that I've seen here before. And so hopefully today we can go out and find some cool things again. Now, when it comes to it being a golf course, obviously the golfers take priority and I've got to be aware of them and careful, but hopefully I'll be able to show you and get some good photos. and everything is a bit crazy on this golf course. There is construction workers and groundsmen everywhere. So I'm struggling to get photos and all the wildlife is disturbed. There's these little carts that they ride in. They look like great fun, but they make a lot of noise and they do go quite fast. So I found a few birds on this lake behind me, such as a heron, which I mentioned. So that was good to see. So today must be the day when they do work on this course. It isn't ideal for me or the wildlife. We have a slight problem and that's bad planning on my part. We've run out of battery. Now this is something I've never done before. I've never actually left without a spare battery, but the battery was fully charged when we started. So clearly I've used too much of it. And the reason for that is probably the fact that I've done a fair bit of video. I don't know if you've noticed, there's been a few more video clips of the wildlife. You see, when I first started, I would do videos and photos. Then I went through a phase of purely doing photos. But today, because I'm using the Canon 250D, which is quite a good video camera, I decided to take some more video. Now, what have I found with the video? One, it uses a lot more battery, clearly. But two, it's very difficult to film something at 600 millimeters without a tripod. However, with the stabilization in the lens for a start and the camera, I have managed to get some steady shots. Now today, I don't have a tripod. I'm purely using the camera and the stabilization. And I think the clips we have got are quite good. The Canon 250D can do 50 frames per second, meaning that we can slow down the footage to half speed. It gives it a more cinematic look, but it also makes it more stable. And so the camera and the lens give you a bit of stability, but obviously how you use the camera does come into play. So how do I get it to be even more stable? One, I hold the lens as far down as possible. I hold it quite near the end. And the reason I do this is because as I'm filming, I can actually pull the camera away from me and that pulls tight on the camera strap that I have round my neck. That provides a really good anchor and means the lens will stay a lot more stable. And you can use these exact same stabilization techniques when taking photos because you ultimately have the same problem at 600 millimeters when taking a photo. You have to increase your shutter speed, but what if you don't want to increase your shutter speed because it's not a beautifully sunny day like today? Well, to keep your shutter speed low, in order to keep your ISO low, a sudden gust of wind. I'm sorry if this hurt off. Sorry if this hurt off. Jeez, did you see that? <laughs> An acorn literally just landed on my head. I kid you not. God, I blimey, this is dangerous. I can see and hear them falling all around me. So we're just going to uh, make quick progress. God, that hurt. And just like that acorn gave me concussion, can you give a like to this video? 
Can you subscribe if you haven't already? And check the links in the description down below to my Instagram, my website, and my shop. I'd love to see you there. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something. And I hope you've had fun, because I certainly have. So with all that being said, don't forget to share this channel, because we're trying to grow it to a 1,000. And I will see you in the next one.